Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Neo 2. Today we're diving into Corpses and Ice, the OG popsicle combo. Brought to you by Otzi. <laughs> Onigawa is a river originating at the foot of Mount Ibuki and flowing into Lake Biwa that divides the north and south areas of the Azai clan's domain, as the shallows of the river provide an advantageous route to invade bordering regions, it's often the site of pitched battles. In 1570, the forces of Oda Nobunaga and Tokugawa, Tokugawa Ieyasu succeeded in sandwiching the allied forces of the Azai and Asakura clans there, and the once clear waters soon ran red with blood. Onagawa in the Omi province. I think each mission does a pretty good job of setting up the boss at some point in advance. And here we can see that the boss is going to be one-armed Shadow Jago. And after wrapping up a couple of things with her narrative, with her uh, character arc last time... Mumyo is actually going to be joining us for this fight. Just like, uh, what's his name? Kuroko? The, uh, the aquatic yokai boy. Looks a bit like... Oh no, how could I have forgotten his... Jason Momoa. <laughs> there we go. The Kappa man. I'm just going to draw this one out. The other one's totally oblivious to us. Oop, oh my god, that might get me grabbed. Nah. Overextended just a little bit with that strong attack. Or with that, uh, that high stance. For a second, that cloud of smoke made me think that maybe we had busted through the floor somehow. You can see, though, you might just get a chance to go down there later on into the, into the level. For now, we take the ground floor approach. Trying to be cautious of the gunmen. I don't think there's anyone up here. But we do get a vantage point on a section that's a little cut off from us. Uh, so we can just do a little bit of sniping. Doesn't even fully finish him off, but weakens him enough. Draws a few of them out. So we can deal with them one by one. Dealt with that one just in time. This one to arrive. Oh, and his injured friend is here. Yeah, we'll let Momio take that one. Finish him off. And then get a little 2v1 going. Get a little power play. I think there might be a Kodama up here, or somewhere around here. I he no wait, that's the Scampus, the kitty. Oh, and we can we can finally see what they're saying. Uh, where's the archer? There you are. We're gonna ignore him for a little bit. Uh, because I think there's some other problems that we might want to deal with first. Eh. 
it actually were free to deal with the archer. That is just so much overkill. Oh, hey, it's been a while since we saw a Magina. What do we got? I'm not too sure what that one is. Uh, I think it's this one? Yeah. Luckily, the gesture menu maps out what they're doing pretty well. Oh, wait. Uh, what are the words I'm looking for? They're from a song that I really like. Capture a map of the gesture. Back up, add a little accurate back to the figure. Redo that move that inward. Sink white lightning shoots from his fingers. Yeah, that's... Uh, it's uh, uh, Rings off the Impossible Kid by Aesop Rock. I really like that song a lot, because not only are the rhymes super good, but also there is something in it that's just very nostalgic. Uh, and there's a lot of strong imagery, like that Zinc White Lightning bit. It's terrific. And then there's just all sorts of lines that are strong on their own. Like, there's this bit about uh, really focusing on something that you love, and the line is, uh, might zone out to the yap of the magpie, and I just love that by itself. Just absent anything else around it, it's so good. Uh, but it's also a really tragic song that I can relate to in, in a way, because part of what it's about is how good drawing felt to him when he was younger. Like, it was his whole life, but it's also about low self-esteem, and the song even starts... Uh, used to draw, hard to admit that I used to draw. So each of these gorgeously detailed, imagery-filled verses ends with something like, um, a uh, routine day with a dirt cheap brush, then a week goes by and it goes untouched, then the, um, fuck, what is it? Then two, then three, then a month, then the rest of your life to beat yourself up. It's all about being too hard on yourself to the point where you fall out of love with things that made you happy in the first place. And I've I've felt that a lot in my life, but like I said back in that uh, fairly recent control video, uh, I want this next verse of my life to have a happier arc than that. Ooh, 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 ooh! I was right on the edge of that first hit. Uh, he down Mumio, but I think we can deal with this all right. He's not being too aggressive, so we have time to get her up. Okay, we're good. Ooh. <laughs> Still not too bad. Just have to make sure that we don't give him a chance to shoot us again. And we get the ultimate reward, which is Soul Core refilling all of our anima we expended during that fight. Unfortunately, that yokai was not the uh, primary generator of the Dark Realm here. It is this Enki. We already broke him. That means we're going to get a finishing blow, too. Yeah, just like that. And since the archer also dropped the soul core, even better, Enki dropped it too. Ah, there's the Kodama. Come over to my place. You can actually invite the Kodama into your hut in this. Which I think is adorable. Ooh, Mumyo's taking a cue from us and just smashing random doodads. There was no reason for her to actually do that. That's some quirky uh, AI coding. It's cool. And this will drop us right back down to the starting shrine. So we have kind of a midway shortcut between this and the upcoming shrine. And a bunch of different ways that we can actually go. Uh, this level can get quite labyrinthian at times. Which just messes with my sense of direction so bad. 
Not to mention, I have a hard time uh, committing to a path anyway. <laughs> uh, this just dead ends, though, so we are going to backtrack. Just a little bit. Mm. This away. There we go. Forks within forks. I think when they let the contrast drop a little bit in this level, it gets really, really cool and gloomy. And just like that. You gotta be a little bit careful fighting the big skeleton here, especially with his tendency towards quad spinning. As long as you don't get knocked off by that, you're pretty safe. There's nothing else that's too threatening on this bridge. And you can see there's an under part to the bridge as well. Uh, we'll drop down to get a few things down there in just a second. I just... No, I just want to loot this body. Please, please, Bloody Graves, why are you like this? Alright, and from here, we can just drop down. I think there's also a ramp behind... Yeah, because otherwise there would be no way back up. Abigaki here. Do not pose any significant danger, because you can knock them off so easily. In fact, a lot of enemies in this level are going to be getting the cliff. Pathing around Momio, I almost went off the bridge. I had a small heart attack. Because I wasn't expecting her to be in my way. And I think with that, we should actually be pretty close to the second shrine of the level. Uh, it's still pretty early on in the episode, so we'll go a bit past that. Uh, but with that second shrine... Momio is going to be departing. Uh, this will act as a shortcut back to the second shrine later on. For now, we are going to rest up. Uh, probably put a point in Constitution. Since my current Switchglaive does have a little bit of scaling in Con, uh, and I'm starting to get close to the point of diminishing returns uh, on the scaling for Magic right now. Plus, I could probably use a little extra health. Just a little bit. No, I don't want him alerting the three down there. We're going to leave them be for the, the time being and come up here and get a Kodama. Who I think, if I'm remembering right, is just around the corner. Little buddy. And while we're up here, we can also use this time to snipe an archer. And if we see anyone else, we can do the same for them. And because this level is essentially an intricate little series of passages, uh, we don't necessarily have to be done with this floor just yet. You could choose to drop down. Maybe try to take one of them out right away with a plunging attack and then just have a 2v1 to fight. Uh, or you can make your way around here. Into the dark realm. Oh, I hear the other one aggroed. Uh, we're gonna come... Yeah, this was a good decision. We're gonna come out here for a moment. And... Wow, it fit through the door doing that. Doing it Psycho Crusher. Uh, this is going to be an awkward spot to fight this thing in, so... Aw. Oh, really wanted that to land. There we are. Oh, no, no, no. This might get some of this recovery going. For the most part, it can't hit that hard. There's only one or two things that I'm in, like, one hit kill a pinch for. But I have to respect those. Oh, 
材の陣地なんというありさまじゃ新たまの力も少しずつ強くなっておる Who just aggro? Oh, and so just like that, we clear out another dark realm. And we get to go through this encampment through a, a pretty different route、uh, than if we had just dropped down in the first place. And even better, this affords us the opportunity to do another really cool drop attack from up here. Uh, so, you can see right below there are. There's at least the one down here. But concealed beneath the plank that we're standing on is actually a second dude. Oh, yeah! We got the good stuff. Both at once. Mmm, feeling it now. Ah,、uh, nothing too interesting from that, just a great spear. I do want to see how the, the spear's moveset has changed at some point before the end of this LP. Because I really like the Neo One version of the spear. It was my pocket weapon next to the Kasari Gama. So I think the Darkness in the Capital, the second DLC from Neo 2 that's coming out、uh, mid October, I want to say. I think that's the last one. So with that,、uh, the other two new weapons to Neo 2, aside from the Switchglaives and the,、uh, the Switchglaive and the Hatchets, and the DLC we're going to get. The split staff from the first DLC, and the second one is adding like, a knuckle weapon. Ooh, this is dicey. Okay, now we're good. Oh my god, he ruined my whole health bar off of that guard break. Yeah, the enemies do get their own finishing blows on you if they run you out of stamina. Woo! I think that's gonna do it for now. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.